Welcome in to the Boost Mobile Chris Paul HBCU Tip-Off Classic from Mohegan Sun. Monica McNutt along with Tiffany Green. And we've got four HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, in action today. First up, West Virginia State coming in at 2-1 and one on the season. They are in the black uniforms against the Panthers of Virginia Union out of the CIAA. A vision of Chris Paul some months in the making and already uh, a friendly welcome into <laughs> Mohegan Sun Arena with the game clock and if we shot learned, clock going down, but anything, that's okay, you right. know. If we haven't learned anything from 2020, it's technical difficulties right. get us all. <laughs> you just roll with it, however, however it goes. But let's just talk about how special this tip-off classic is because this is the brainchild of Phoenix Suns point guard Chris Paul and to see it come to fruition his commitment to HBCUs stronger now than ever absolutely so if you talk about purpose driven leadership and putting your money where your mouth is I mean he talked specifically about wanting these collegiate programs programs excuse me to have the same opportunities that big-time college basketball and power five schools give their athletes Khalid State on the jump shot, one of the best scorers for the Panthers, coming off a 16-point performance in their win over Mansfield University. I gotta say, friend, I'm super excited to be with you because you kill it on all the HBCU coverage for football <laughs> this season, so now we get to bring some of that energy to the hardwood. Thank you, but I gotta say, you are the complete rock star who does it all, Monica, and how about the dude, Glenn Abram, being that rock star for the Yellow Jackets? Absolutely, and he's gonna have a bright green light to take shots from behind the arc. He's one of this team's best scorers, and he's a leader for this group. Well, those folks are still waking up here in the arena. Small crowd, but a loud presence from both benches. A great opportunity and platform for these two teams to play. That one off the mark by Jordan Peebles. Popped out, still in possession, the Panthers, and they decide to pull it back out, set up their offense with Demarius Pitts. And you saw there why Peebles is one of the best rebounders on this team. He's the second leading rebounder. He's so quick off the bounce and has tremendous, watch him go, Seth. He has tremendous height and length at 6'7". Oh, well, you like the way he gets up and grabs it, a preseason all-CIAA selection for Coach Jay Butler. Butler, a graduate of Virginia Union in his sixth season as a head coach. He won a trio of CIAA championships during his playing days at his alma mater. They get it inside, and that's Ramid Wright, Ramad Wright. Ramad Wright with the bucket, and that gives Virginia Union an early 4-3 advantage. It's going to be interesting strategically as this game unfolds. Virginia Union's a squad that scores just under 65 versus West Virginia State, a group that runs the score up and gets around 84 points per ball game. So we'll see which team's defense is able to prevail. Well, when we talked with Brian Poor yesterday, he says, we want to run your ragged. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a track meet. A long three and just off the front of the rim for Abram coming down with it is Darius Hines. Hines over. And back to Hines. High off the glass, kisses it and count it. So many of the teams that we had an opportunity to watch this morning during shoot around worked off that high ball screen at the top of the key. And, and honestly, Tiff, growing up watching CIAA basketball, that seems to be so signature. These speedy guards that really can kill you off that ball screen. In the corner, that one off the mark from Abram, brought down by Peebles and getting out, running in transition. Don't have the numbers, tried to push that one up ahead and they turn it over. The Panthers give it right back to West Virginia State. Well, you know the energy coming into a classic like this. It's going to be exceptionally high. Still very early on in the season, for both of these teams, we talk about West Virginia State wanting to, to be that fun team to watch, to get up, trying to average 90 points a game. Woo! Let him run. <laughs> In the corner. And Anthony Pittman is off the mark. Tate bringing it back the other way. The Niagara transfer, pull up jumper, no good. Brought down by Wright Wright. 
finds his man at the top of the key, Darius Hines, who decides to run the half-court offense. 12 to go on the shot clock off the screen. There's Tate. And running over the defender is Anthony Pittman, the offensive foul called against the sophomore out of Charleston, West Virginia. I don't, I do rather, appreciate the change of speed here. Pittman at first very cool off that rebound, but just explodes right into the defender who had already established position in, term, in Darius Hines drawing that charge. Here's Hines trying to take it to the hoop, kicks it back out. That's getting in the passing lane if you're Anthony Pittman, and Pittman trying to go 101, moves towards that elbow, and no good. Rebound, stays with the Yellow Jackets, and then Glenn Abram does just that, drains the three. The assist from Brandon Keaton off of the offensive rebound. The ability to create second chance opportunities on that last possession allows West Virginia State to tie it wow. at six all. And once again, back-to-back -back steals from Pittman. A little hesitation from him. Instead of going in hard, he was trying to shield off the defender, missing the easy bunny. And then the long three from Abram can't connect. <laughs> Abrams really has a bright light from three to <laughs> This man has gotten up four threes in four minutes of basketball. <laughs> Jordan Peoples, they want to get him going. Just getting a hand on that one and tipped away was Brandon Bradley Lewis. Well, timeout taken on the floor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Boost Mobile. 15 20 to go in this first quarter. So, this is the Boost Mobile Chris Paul HBCU tip off classic presented by Hotels.com. We'll step aside. Money is power. That's why Boost Mobile finds ways to help you keep more of it, to spend on what you really want. Get three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month each and a free Samsung Here. Galaxy A32 5G when you switch to Boost. Help back the power. Feel the power of keeping more money in your pocket with three unlimited lines for 30 bucks a month each on one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save. Boost Mobile. No, I, I, only if they talk to me and talk back, but I'm not kidding. Cheese's snacks are the most satisfying combination of crunch with the <laughs> cheese with their delicious perfection. Cheese. It's not all about you, cheese. You think I have a mouth? I'm a wheel of cheese. It's got a point. Yeah. Cheese it, cheesy, crunchy satisfaction. Welcome back. Uh, we're tied at six nil here from Mohegan Sun as. West Virginia State out of the Mountain East Conference and representing the CIAA is Virginia Union. Well, the Panthers shot 51% from the field in their win Saturday. Hit 11 threes so far today. Both teams struggling relatively from the field. It's early. It's and you know, quite candidly, both coaches, um, Coach Poor and Coach Butler, it is early. And so these teams are still looking for their identities in terms of what will sustain them. They both have ideas of what they want from their teams, but sometimes as coaches you gotta adjust to your personnel a bit. And so it's it's cool for us to have to be a part of the process as these teams work out some <laughs> yeah, growing pains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we working out some growing pains. I know here that's right. <laughs> on the sidelines, so it's all good and we roll with it. No problem at all. That's that's what we have learned to be. Uh, adaptable. Adaptable, there it to is. All types of situations. They inbound the ball, and Hines, who's 
running the show. The Maris transfer, the starting point guard. Good energy leader. He kicks it over into the corner, and that one is drained by Demarius Pitts. Perfectly executed. We saw Virginia Union work on that play just in terms of attacking whatever the defensive set, whether it be a man or a zone by West Virginia State, but they usually show more man-to-man uh, -man defense. Substitution with a couple of new faces on the court, but Dwayne Jones, they want to get him involved in the offense along with Pittman, he has been a little bit of everywhere and the foul called from behind against the Panthers defender. That's now, going against right. This, within this zone, I thought the Panthers did a good job of closing out to shooters, but Pittman got into what I call the dead spot in the zone, which is right at that high post. And because he was so decisive in his decision making, going to the basket and explodes, he caught the defense off guard and earned himself a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, Vinny Pittman. A West Virginia kid, former high school basketball player, but made his way to the hardwood. Since then, been a great contributor. Both he and Anthony Pittman, excuse me, Anthony Pittman and Glenn Abram, two terrific scorers. Coach Poor going straight to the hoop and again making a difference is Demir Pitts. He said, "Say my name." Listen, man. How do you beat a defense? Well, you don't let him get set. And that was it. wasn't a, obviously wasn't full court pressure from West Virginia State, but a little bit out of position. You don't close out to the corner. Pitts, quick first step and the finish through contact. So he will go to the line and try to finish off the old three point play and give his team. A four-point advantage. And is able to knock it down. As both of these teams are just trying to feel their way through the early part of the season, what do classics like this, what do tournaments like this help do for you early on if you're a coach? Well, it's great to see teams that uh, present different styles and prepare you for conference play. We talked about our ability to be adaptable and agile here on the sideline, but so it is the same. Can you put in the systems that we've installed earlier against a program whose style and defensive scheme you may not see? And again, 6-7, Ramad Wright with the bucket. That was a terrific pass by Jordan Peebles. It's interesting, between the two teams, as Glenn Abrams gets another one up, he gets that one to fall, though. Um, West Virginia State comes in as the higher scoring team, but one thing that the Panthers are doing really well defensively is moving on the fly to the ball, and when they move, their hands are up and in passing lanes, which is slowing West Virginia State down in terms of their vision. And they're taking it to the body, and there's Jordan Peoples. That's one of the things that, you know, the Yellow Jackets knew coming in that this was going to be a very difficult zone to score mm -hmm. against and try to negate some of that speediness, that running around the court that West Virginia State does. Well, they're going to have to find a little bit more urgency as the ball moves around the perimeter, right? Like so far, the pass has gone from foul line extended on either side. It's been about two passes around the top of the key. If you really want to work a zone, you whip that thing all the way around until you find a soft spot and you can get the ball to the high post. And your high post player, in this case, Jeremiah Moore, becomes a decision maker. Well, he's part of their big three, their version of it. But continuing to launch up threes is West Virginia State. Thus far, they are three of eight from beyond the arc. I mean, shoot or shoot to get hot and shoot or shoot to stay hot too, I mean. <laughs> Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> and you know, it, it would be different if this team didn't have guards who could attack, right? And the wow. tip in by Jeremiah Moore, we mentioned his name and there's his first two points of the game. Terrifically athletic play. I think we got a clock issue. Mm -hmm. Another clock issue, just how the way we started, but we can educate you on Virginia Union and, and talk about just the run that Jay Butler has had with his program. Three national championships to this program's credit. Again, he was a part of 
that great CIAA success. He won the conference championship back in 2018 with this program. So these teams coming in with some gravitas. Next three. It's really cool though, to, to I, the purpose behind this tournament. And, and we talked to each coach um, of this game and then our doubleheader as well. And in the last two years, there's been an influx of attention paid to HBCUs, right? I think about Mackenzie Bezos and the, the large general philanthropic efforts that she's made to HBCUs, but she's not the only one. But it, it's really cool to have these conversations with these coaches. Well, yes, they acknowledge it, but they are not new to this. They are true to this as the, season, as the saying goes. Both Coach Butler and Coach Poor have been a part of their institutions for so long and are so proud of what they represent. And Poor, a graduate of West Virginia State in his 23rd season as the head coach. Again, the body of Wright going against Moore and then just too strong. They're calling for a foul. Sky in to get it is Noah Jordan. He can't connect. And back up the floor come the Panthers. West Virginia State sticking with their man-to-man. -man. Not a ton of screen action so far that will cause them to need to switch, but that's the second time that a player has gotten terrific position with the duck in. And a whistle on the floor. A foul going against West Virginia State. This ball will be taken out underneath the basket. That one whistled against Jeremiah Moore for his first personal foul. Coming in now is Robert Osborne for Khalif Tate. Osborne trying to do a little spin move. Can't get it to go. Bouncing through a number of different hands. Last touch by the Panthers. Osborne set a terrific screen in the under the basket inbound execution. He just a little, little tentative maybe in terms of the follow up on what was a tough shot, a, a well guarded shot, but the screen he set got him open and that was great. There's Jenkins. And get the ball here is Noah Jordan. They find Jenkins again. Jenkins on the drive. Panthers switched to a man to man that possession. Settling for that three point shot. Still, Virginia Union holding on to this 16 13 lead. Timeout taken on the floor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Boost Mobile. Discover the power to save on America's largest 5G networks. The Basketball Hall of Fame, where the game never ends. And City committed $1 billion to help close the racial wealth gap. Learn more at city.com slash racial wealth. Don't worry, Ma, we'll be there soon. We? Is this the one? Well, let's say I found the one who takes me to another level. Always stays calm under pressure. Most importantly, the one that helps me discover the coolest places. This sounds wonderful. Come outside, I'll introduce you. They're here. Definitely the one. <laughs> Introducing the all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier. Money is power. That's why Boost Mobile finds ways to help you keep more of it. To spend on what you really want. Get three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month each and a free Samsung Galaxy A32 5G when you switch to Boost. How's that for power? Feel the power of keeping more money in your pocket with three unlimited lines for 30 bucks a month each on one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save. Boost Mobile. From the front row to the upper level, from the first date to the family outing, from the tight budget to the once in a lifetime, from sold out stadiums, packed arenas, unforgettable experiences, every event in between. Get the best seats at the best prices 
Memories for life are at ticketsforless.com. Never any service fees. son for West Virginia State. It's pretty much been Glenn Abram. It's been his show. Nine of the 13 points have come from number zero. Tried to get some more right there and too strong. I was about to say, right on cue, Tiff. You talked him up, but you know, at that time it didn't work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> and knocking down the shot was Devin Sims. Devin Sims has been a very efficient scorer for the team this season there with the bucket to extend the lead. I gotta say, so far in this ball game, the Panthers just seem to be the team playing with more urgency on both sides of the basketball. There's a particular rhythm about their execution in the half court, and of course on defense, I've already admired how quickly they are moving, particularly in that zone with their hands extended. That's Taj Harding, the true freshman coming down to knock down a three. He was three of three in their last game. You wonder what adjustments West Virginia State is going to prepare to make because right now they've given off up two quick threes, which are huge momentum plays. Here's the thing. If you're Brian Poor and you give Glenn Abram the ultimate green light, are you satisfied with these long threes that he's taken? <sighs> I, you know, I, I, looking at the stats coming into this ballgame, he has not yet hit at a particularly high clip. But clearly, Coach Butler believes that that is one of the best offensive weapons for their squad. Now, what I will say is that the ball has not made its way around the perimeter to a second action. That three will be there. What else can you find? Very good point as Glenn Abram, the team's leading scorer with 21 points, trapped there high, and then it is called for the offensive foul. So they turn it over. The Panthers defense doing this thing again. Got yeah, he, um, Abrams that time hit with the offensive foul because of that hook as he was trying to get out. Oh, he did. It's zero, not three. Yo, let's make sure we got that right. Trying to get out of that trap in that chicken wing. And trying to plead his case to the official, but unsuccessful is Glenn Abram. Here's Tyreek Riley, and Riley can't hit. The question is, where else Ooh. did this offense come from? And a nice flat move. Okay, we see Ooh. it made us sit back in our seat. Yes, for a indeed. Second. Talk about a crossover and the, just the change of speed and change of direction combined with the quickness there from, I believe, was that Noah Jordan? Anthony Pittman, excuse me. Well, we were just saying, who else can be a scorer for them? And applying the pressure was Noah Jordan there, high up on the edge of Riley. He's called for the foul. The Yellow Jackets, they're going to have to find some defensive energy. And it can't be solely predicated on being able to get a bucket on the other end. They got to get it going defensively first. Well, they're one of their best defenders. Is currently on the bench in Dwayne Jones. So who will be that spark plug, as you mentioned, defensively? Look like a little push off there. Don't matter. Mm -hmm. Taj Hardy strong mm -hmm. on the way there. I'm not gonna give you that push off personally, Tiff. I think you gotta gotta be tough, be physical in there. <laughs> Good pass. Pittman again, making the pass, moving around, falling to the floor hard was Jenkins and Jenkins. They've been fouled or tripped up. That's only the third team foul for the Panthers. But what I did like about that possession by West Virginia State is you saw the urgency that needed to be ticked up in terms of how quickly the ball moves around the perimeter. The guys gave pump fakes to make the defense bite and then looked to attack. And they attacked the paint.
Lane Jones checking back in the ball game, kicks it out, finds Anthony Pittman, and Pittman was fouled on his way up. He'll go to the line and shoot three. Tyreek Riley is the guilty party. A little bit of an undisciplined closeout there by Riley. Excuse me, Riley. Riley, and gives Pittman a little bit of a high five. Knocks down the first of three free throws. Pittman now with five points, looking over. That's his first missed free throw, was three of three before that. Brian Four has to find a a way to continue to jumpstart this offense. Trying to pick the pocket of Khalif Tate. And top of the key three knocked down by Sims. I tell you. Sims stretching it out to a 10 point lead for his Panthers. Stolen away by Rayleigh. Here comes Tate. Tate going on to Jones, Ooh. and he's fouled. Panthers are just being far more aggressive. Transition has served the Panthers well, and then their defensive intensity, communicating, they know exactly the execution there. They're sliding to the positions that the, that the Yellow Jackets are looking to pass the ball. They've paid tremendous attention to the scout to lead up to this one. <laughs> And, and in shoot around today, you know, Jay Butler talked to us about wanting to put the pressure on them and flying around the basketball, and they've done so successfully. It is, I think teams that take a lot of pride in their defense, it, it feels good. It's almost like a good offensive possession when you're proud of the connectivity that you present on defense. And I only say that because it was one of the things that my Georgetown teams, we hung our hats on it. We had an amount of turnovers we wanted to force. Like, we would get so excited to be flying around in the right position because it literally bears out exactly as the coaches tell you if you're doing it right. And then defense giving your offense an extra boost mm -hmm. or jump start because it typically leads to it. And their great defense once more, standing strong in the post, was right. Khalif Tate has done a tremendous job of just kind of facilitating, making sure guys are in the right place. The Panthers don't seem rushed at all offensively. Pittman going up to get that rebound. And going straight to the hoop, had wow. his mind focused, wow. determined, and straight in. Glenn Abram for the bucket. But that speaks to the point about settling for those threes when you have the opportunity to do that. Now, granted, that was a decision that was made early in the shot clock, and so you don't necessarily allow the defense to get as established. But if I'm the Yellow Jackets, I'm looking for more of that. Coming out to trap. Wright gets it down to Harding, and Harding sees it roll off the rim, the putback, and the foul. And as Devin Sims will go to the line. I know Noah Jordan doesn't love it, but I believe that call is going to go against him. Oh, they got number zero. They got Abrams on it? This is a great cut. This is, I mean, there's so much movement for this Panther squad. The cut there by Taj Harding was wonderful, and then the offensive rebound. Woo! Twenty-eight, nineteen, Virginia Union with the lead. Well, this is the first of a double header coming up next. We'll see Winston Salem State, the CIAA champion, taking on Morehouse out of the SIAC.
Hey, it's time to hydrate. Best kept secret in sports. It's no longer a secret. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow Cross Country Mortgage was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? We got a good organization here. Good luck with the next close. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembling delivery on all grills, three ninety nine and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. This is the dimension of imagination. Some hesitate when faced with a decision, but not you. Introducing the 2022 Telluride Nightfall Edition. And it's NBA on ESPN time. Let go. Buy make the block where the let go. Hey, then it's case closed. Looking at the grave with the say so. Wednesday on ESPN. This game is made possible by Boost Mobile. Discover the power to save on America's largest 5G networks with Boost Mobile. Back inside Mohegan Sun Arena, the home of the Connecticut Sun. WNBA team, and this is also the home of uh, Jaquel Jones, yes, the indeed. WNBA MVP. And I must say, I enjoyed every bit of being part of the broadcast team for the Sun this year. <laughs> The Mohegan Sun Arena, terrific community that supports women's basketball and basketball in general. There's been some great tournaments in this building. You speak of, I mean, there was the Basketball Hall of Fame Classic yes, earlier. Indeed. We saw several ranked teams coming into the Classic with Purdue, UNC, Tennessee, along with Villanova. Boilermakers walking away with the Classic title. Yeah, led by Jaden Ivey, or AKA as women's basketball fans know him, Neil Ivey, head coach of Notre Dame, <laughs> her son. <laughs> I feel like they should start singing, like when he shoots it, be like, Poison Ivy. Uh, wow. Come on. I, go ahead, Tim. Okay. Hit, you, hit you with it? Okay. No? Mm -hmm. Dating myself? Uh, no, Maybe I, just a little? Listen, your experiences make you who you are. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for uh, trying to cover me up and make me, <coughs> just so you know, <laughs> little old there, little old. Another example, though, of just the Panthers continuing to put pressure on this Yellow Jackets defense. And I know that that charge block restricted area has been a, a, was a point of emphasis, but it's also a point of contention. <laughs> Plenty of coaches have differing opinions there. And taking the seat is Harding. When you look at the stat sheet for Virginia Union, you see the balance of scoring. All but two that have touched the floor have scored. Meanwhile, Brian Poor's team has relied on his big three and big three only because it's Abram, Moore, Pittman, and nobody else. So, and right, that becomes the existential question, right? Like, do I need to do something else or do my guys need to play better? And it might be a combination of both. Uh, West Virginia State has not gotten very many easy looks, especially for a team that scores in the 80-point range and likes to run up and down the floor. And, and credit um, Coach Butler and the Panthers. They've not allowed them to get some of those easy runouts that probably give your big three a decent percentage of the, their total uh, points that they average. And currently, there is a review on the floor We'll wait to get word to see exactly what they are reviewing from that last play.
And I think they may be going to check to see if they have the correct shooter. All right, so 15 white. Oh, I didn't think that was ever in question. You drew the block, right? All right, so Jordan Peebles will go to the line and shoot one. Rather be safe than sorry. You know, that's, that's what the replay does nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to, you, you, you have the ability to go back and, and just double check yourself because you do want to get it right. Now, off the missed free throw, West Virginia looking, West Virginia State, excuse me, looking to get something quick, well executed, good patience there, and not forcing that jumper by EJ Ernest Jenkins. Abram. Not able to connect there on the three. Abram's shot is going up and is rolling off the rim softly, so he's getting good looks. Just hasn't been able to capitalize a ton. Active hands from the Panthers, and they maintain possession. Khalif Tate making them pay. I'm not sure why Jeremiah Moore doesn't close out a little bit more urgency as that three caps off a 10 to two run we're the Panthers. I mean, this is a team that has already knocked down plenty of threes. You gotta get a high hand up in that face. This group five of nine from long range and the Panthers out of Richmond, Virginia, feeling mighty comfortable here in Uncasville, Connecticut. Home away from home. Iron is nice and kind. <laughs> <laughs> Gut check time if you're the Yellow Jackets. And you have to rely on those steely veterans for you, like a Glenn Abram, a super senior on this team. He, along with a couple of others, like Jeremiah Moore, have been around this program. They know what to expect. And so you see the uh, Winston-Salem State fans in the stands. Somebody's auntie's over there. <laughs> Hey, Grandma. Hey, right. auntie. hey, Auntie. How you doing? <laughs> the Rams will be in action next. And I'll tell you, Virginia Union very familiar with Winston-Salem State coming out of the CIAA. Back to the basket. Turn around and Moore hits it off the back iron. That's a good look, though, for Moore. You just got to get that one to fall. And you Listen, basketball analysis can be very complex or it can be very simple you got to hit some shots and so there have been looks that the big three have gotten in particular that they just have to hit Hines trying to lob it up there for Peebles and Anthony Pittman with a big step to the hoop to take and got the reverse they're so much better in transition or that secondary transition when they are forced and i say this at every level of basketball when i'm covering the connecticut sun the new york knicks whoever it may be it is a tough task to set up in your half court and work through an offense go ahead and name drop that in there girl. i bit. love to see HBCU, i'm here for we're it celebrating just, blackness. just so we know that's that black girl <laughs> magic and i am here for it and i'm also here for that glenn haven triple and you know once the shooter get going you gotta watch out but again, early in the shot clock, this Yellow Jacket squad is so much better when they can do things quickly and decisively. That's the tempo they like to play with. That's the attitude that they have. And they have got it to a 10-point deficit. Ooh, 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 ooh. But coming right back, a little scoop rolling around for Demarius Pitts. English on that one. I was ready to say that's not a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> But see, when it goes in, it's beautiful. It's like, oh, yeah, that's great. Do that again. Ah. But you'd like to see that. I do. Looking to get Jeremiah more, more involved. He's getting good position in the paint. He's got to be a little bit more. He's initiate just a little bit more of that contact. I think he's getting bumped and just thrown off a bit. And Dwayne Jones with the strong pass, turning it over, and they'll hand it back to Virginia Union, a 12-point advantage for the Panthers with 3.49 remaining in the first half. From the front row to the upper level, from the first date to the family outing, from the tight budget to the once in a lifetime, 
and sold out stadiums, packed arenas, unforgettable experiences, and every event in between. Get the best seats at the best prices. Memories for life are at ticketsforless.com. Never any service fees. And Doug. Got a couple of bogeys on your six, Limo. They need customized car insurance from Liberty Mutual, so they only pay for what they need. What do you say we see what this bird can do? Woo! We are not getting you a helicopter. Looks like we're walking, kid. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembling delivery on all grills, three ninety nine dollars and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. detecting hazards in the dark with available night vision in the Cadillac XT6. This game is brought to you by City. City committed $1 million to help close the racial wealth gap. Learn more at city.com slash racial equality right now virginia union trying to hit him with the left trying to hit him Listen, with the right Tiff, in this first half now. wait a minute don't start <laughs> don't start nothing i gotta say one of the best things about um the exp the hbcu experience you know well yeah. with football but even with college basketball i mean I've gone, been at games at Howard University in D.C., at home where I'm from, Bowie State University, which is a CIAA school, and the woo-woos or whatever the cheerleaders are called, <laughs> and the band, to get it rocking, man. And look, we were having a great conversation, Mark Spear Spears, Bill Roden, Justin Tinsley, Mia Berry with the Undefeated, one of the HBCU reporters. We were just talking about how there is, like, an immense amount of trash talking absolutely. that takes place. Oh, like, absolutely. It's, it's, in the it's on the court, it's in the stands, but... Some would say that the cheerleaders might be the most hostile. I, listen, as an athlete, I was always like, okay, cheerleaders, I don't know if that's an athlete, but fine. But I <laughs> loved any time. My sister went to Hampton. My mom went to Howard. Obviously, I mentioned the schools that um, I was around as a kid, and my dad was a referee. So we get a, everybody looks to be good as we get a foul call there. The cheerleaders are always ready. Like, always ready. Let's take another look at it here. Glenn Abrams with a beautiful backdoor cut, and he just gets his defender up in the air. Easy call there. Yeah, you know Jay Butler. Yeah, back the yeah. Back. So, so you've been around the HBCU world. I'm an HBCU grad from Florida A&M University, and it's just a... Go ahead, get your, go ahead, flex it off. Go say, ahead, say hey you know, the number folks. one public hey HBCU, <laughs> the Rattlers going to the FCS playoffs, you know, the incomparable marching 100. There you Never go. Never a dull moment or time. Lay it all out there, yeah. so go ahead, this is your moment. <laughs> <laughs> but when we talk about these programs and, and the rich history and tradition, you know, we're talking with Coach Poor with West Virginia State. I said, well, how do you get people to institute mm -hmm. West Virginia. Mm. Okay, so about 10 miles from the capital, Charleston. He said, I remind them of who came through here. Mm. So the Earl Lloyds and the Sweetwater Cliftons, Chuck Cooper. Wow, what names? Who were the first to be drafted mm -hmm. to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Hidden figures. You seen the movie? I have seen the movie. You familiar with it? I am familiar. Katherine Johnson? Graduated yeah. from West Virginia State. A yellow jacket. Mm -hmm. And I think when you continue to have those conversations, I mean, Virginia Union, obviously a proud history. Five players have gone to the NBA. You know the names. Charles Oakley, mm -hmm. Ben Wallace. Mm -hmm. There's some of the defensive energy that you want to see if you're the Yellow Jackets resulting. Oh, and 
Pittman was fouled from behind by Rayleigh. I actually thought he tripped over his own teammates, but but okay. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> See, that's why we're here. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we don't get to wear stripes. No, no, no. I do not envy that role. Now, with under three minutes to go before half, Hold on, what's my math? I'm literally terrible at math. That's not, that's 11, okay? Um, if, if you're the Yellow Jackets, right? You gotta, you gotta string together three stops. Right. <laughs> I had to carry the one, I had to make sure. No. It's like, wait, hold on, let me get my numbers right. So, so, they cut the lead to eight. Oh, whoops, I was wrong again. Okay. <laughs> See? Oh, this was sincere. It was, but you, you, you know what? You let everybody know up front. Sorry, help me out, that's okay. why you're here. <laughs> Keep me on track. <laughs> Then <laughs> trim the lead to seven. I still say three stops, whether it had been 11 points or seven points. And part of that is continuing this 10 to two run that they've been on. Mmm, tough. The question is, Monica, then what have you seen differently? How has West Virginia State, you know, they've been lingering around, they've been hanging around, but what do they do to close this deficit? Well, first, they started looking to score earlier in the shot clock. I think initially the zone, and then we saw a little bit of man as well from the Panthers, they were a bit taken aback by that. Okay, it's a zone, so we're supposed to whip this ball around the perimeter, let's do this, and we still jack up a three. We saw in consecutive possessions, they came down with a sense of urgency. Sometimes there was a pass, sometimes there wasn't, but they scored early in the shot clock, which is more signature to who they were. After they started to do that, a little bit more energy on the defensive end. They've got hands high. They're getting to the help spot. They're taking away the pass out of the trap that we saw out here by the Mohegan Sun logo. And so they've just picked up the pace a little bit. Which feeds exactly into their identity. Mm-hmm. And Darius Hines knocking it down. Now this is a, I love this strategy from Coach Butler. Okay, they're getting shots early. Let's slow them down with some full court pressure. Although that wasn't exactly it, but I understand the thought process behind it. <laughs> and again, a lot of contact being made. No whistle as of yet. And turning them over, that pressure proved to help the Panthers here. Now with 2.19 to go. I'm not quite sure why Noah Jordan got the ball in that spot, but. Tate back out to Hines. Hines kicks Good it over. Out. The Sims and the steal here coming back the other way. There's Ernest Jenkins. Jenkins with a reverse layup and Jenkins coming right back, cutting the lead to seven. Terrific Euro step and finish by Jenkins. If he had missed that one, he was going to hear about it because he had a teammate running with him. You hear the chance of defense from the Yellow Jackets bench trying to turn up the intensity. Just about 90 seconds to go. Ooh. And Peoples, and you heard that smack. Ooh, come on now. I was just about to comment that the Yellow Jackets are doing a good job of closing out on the catch. <sighs> and then you kind of give up that one. But part of that is a byproduct of allowing peoples to get position wholesale duck in as opposed to trying to split him as a defender, right? High hand on the top side or bottom side, whichever you have prepared for according to the scout, but you want to split him and not allow him to establish position in front of you because you're stuck behind him. He's got a few inches on you. Your only option really is to slap down. Six, seven graduate student out of Emporia, Virginia at 10 points in their last game was a perfect five for five from the field here tonight. He's got four. That one rolls in and out. West Virginia State is starting to figure things out here late in the first half. And again, the aggressive mindset, moving, active. Dwayne Jones that time, mm, from our vantage point, can't tell if that was a little bit of a friendly whistle uh, from the I'm not sure where he was going. <laughs> His angle was kind of not toward the basket there. But, I, but putting pressure on the defense by attacking the paint and playing north and south is imperative for what the Yellow Jackets do. 
Some late substitutions here. Brandon Keaton along with Tariq Brown checking in for the Yellow Jackets. One and one. Which is still a part of the men's college basketball game. Something you just don't want to change. I, and I was really sad when one and one went away on the women's side. You still have halves, you still have one and ones. I mean, there are just certain elements of the game that you appreciate. And you hear the energy coming over from the Yellow Jackets bench. I imagine. I was gonna say you get it to five at halftime, you're okay, but I'll still, I'll still stick to five because they're gonna have to get a stop here defensively and they need to get another score. But it, it really feels like the Yellow Jackets needed the first part of the half to settle in. The trap. And a nice pass out of the post from right to Peebles, who was streaking down the lane. Peebles did a great job of moving without the basketball there. That just, you're so hard to guard when you're on the move. They get it to Noah Jordan, wow. and Jordan able to answer back the other way. Wrong so nice save. inside play on both yeah, sides. Yeah, that was a good play defensively and offensively. Just better offense versus good defense. Two possession ball game. during seconds of the first half, under 20. Gotta get a shot up, five on the clock. Tate lets it fly. And going out of bounds, so 6.2 seconds to work with for West Virginia State. Dwayne Jones for the Yellow Jackets did a good job of staying connected to Khalif Tate, who has been lighting this team up from behind the arc. And Jones. Oh. A little fake pushes it up. The three, no good. And did he get fouled on the way up? That is the question. Brian Porras going over to the official to ask that very thing. And I actually sympathize with Porras because it did look like the far side official held up the fist. I'm not sure if...